All right, we're live on Facebook. Uh, we're going to get started here in a couple of minutes. We got the beautiful and brave, courageous and compassionate Laura Eisenhower uh, coming on with us tonight. And uh, it's a privilege. Got to meet her and actually became friends with her and her, her husband. Her husband and I hit it off real well. And so did Laura and I and Morgan and Laura. And so we're really looking forward to it. And it's a uh, it's a synchronistic because, uh, you know, Morgan and I have been uh, traveling across the uh, U.S. since August the 8th. We arrived on Lionsgate in L.A. after we thought we were going to live happily ever after in Hawaii until our higher selves and teams told us we needed to pack our stuff and move. But anyway, tomorrow we're going to be heading out and uh, going to be heading to Florida. Uh, we're going to stop a few places, uh, meet up with some people on the way, go down to the Waves of Light Conscious Conference where we're gonna be doing a, a keynote and a workshop on shadow work and sacred sexuality and sacred union. So this is our last broadcast. Uh, we're gonna to try to broadcast every day, but we don't really have anything scheduled for a few days uh, because we really don't know where we're gonna be, but um, we're excited about it. And it's synchronistic to me that we're gonna be sitting down with Laura um, you know, given all the things that have been happening on the global stage lately and her keen perspective, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to hear how the conversation goes. A lot of respect for her, for what she's been doing out there for a long, long time, uh, really put herself out there and, uh, is an inspiration to a lot of people. Um, you know, uh, there's been a lot of conversations recently on this show in regard to it's time for people to step up and she's really set the bar for, uh, for all of us um, in the work that she's been doing for so long when it wasn't cool, <laughs> you know, when it was, uh, we talked about on the show feeling, uh, you know, like the odd one out, crazy, all that stuff, but she's been doing this for a long time and anything we've been called or <laughs> any way we've been treated, she's, she uh, has uh, done the same and for a lot longer. So I just want to say big props to Laura. Thank you so much for the work you're doing. Um, all right. I'm just sharing through the network real quick. And uh, let me just get this over to the Sology page. All right. If these shows resonate, please share. We would appreciate it. We are, our brother over here, Aaron Pearson, is building our uh, our website. It's more than a website. It's an independent stream, independent server outside of the constructs of social media controlled by the matrix. Um, it's going to be a multiple channel uh, platform, uh, eventually uh, accessible from a handheld it's going to offer an opportunity for anyone and everyone to put their own productions together and uh, we're excited about it so until that occurs we would appreciate if you would share to a page or to a group so we can stay above these algorithms because they've been suppressing us for quite some time now uh, and i also want to thank everybody for your continued love and support and contributions that allow us to keep expanding this platform uh, which will in short time, be the world's first 24-7, 365 universal cast, lives and replays, and, and a whole lot more, a, a, a social media or a, a profile base, personal profile base, a social community, a lot like the Facebook type of thing, where you'll be able to download stuff and um, you know, images and videos and go live and all that. But it's a work in process. Thank you, Aaron Pearson, uh, for all the work you're doing. I'm going to put on a quick... Uh, a real quick uh, uh, intro and allow some people to come in and then we'll pull Laura up here.
up here. Let me just turn this music off. There we go. All right, let's let's get it on. All right, here we go. Hey, Laura. Hey, Todd. How what's, are you doing? What's happening? Oh, not too much. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. Doing good. How's the uh, How's the uh, the Great White North? It's definitely blowing snow right now. It's we got a big blizzard. <laughs> but oh, it's really? Been a mild winter up until now. So, but it's it's a little bit a uh, little bit heavy tonight. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, my whole body's tingling. I don't know what's been going on all day today. I felt a little bit nauseated. I felt a lot of energy coming. There's been a lot of stuff going on, actually, as you know, yeah. uh, you know, energetically. And then it's interesting to see the stuff going on in the world stage. And it's interesting to me to see how people are uh, expressing themselves or reacting or responding, whatever term you want to use. I've been watching. I read your stuff. So I, I love how you just put it out there. You know, you mm -hmm. just, you just, you know, right between the eyes, you know, boom. Uh, but you did, a, you did one a few days ago and it was just, I wish I would have uh, gotten a copy of it, but, uh, and, and you were basically saying, Hey, you know, I mean, I'm just gonna use my own words. Hey, all this stuff's going on and we know all that, but it's really about me and you, you know, it's up to us. And no matter what's happening or what's happened to us, I mean, it's, it's up to us, you know, no one's going to do it for us, but. I thought it was a great post. A lot of your stuff is, is you know, very inspiring to me. So thank you for that. And uh, I don't know, you want to start there? There's a, what is it? Uh, Prince Harry is abdicated and uh, we got, you know, bombs going off and we got this and we got that. And, you know, where are you sitting with all this stuff right now energetically? Yeah, yeah. And the fires and, I mean, the list goes on. The Strange Hollywood uh intro by ricky that was interesting yeah wasn't it um, yeah let me well, ask you let me ask you about that that's a perfect example for somebody who has been exposed to what you've been exposed to um and i'm talking all the way back you know the things that you talked about uh, i won't get into them all but the personal experiences you've had i would say targeted definitely uh but being uh you know having access to uh the physical and the non-physical channels or streams that you have uh i look at something like ricky gervais and and you know i trust todd and i trust laura and i trust the 99.99 percent i have a hard time and i know it's my own block i have a hard time believing anything that comes out uh, on the mainstream media part of me wants to say the white hats are you know in control of hollywood now and they're in control of this and in control of that and they're bringing this stuff out uh spoon feeding us so that we can handle it, you know? And then the other part says, you know what? This has been going on for thousands of years. Why would it change now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it, it really depends on the person. I think on the one hand, it can be seen as a joke when people are already really, really closed off to this information. It's, it's kind of like some of the shows they put out that like to normalize things. Um, and I wasn't even thinking about that when I first heard it. I, I more kind of dug into it and I saw that a lot of people didn't want him. A lot of Hollywood actors did not want him to be the host. Uh, mm -hmm. There was, I guess, some talk about how he was gonna probably take it too far. He insisted he wouldn't and he did anyway. But then, you know, you can hear something else that, you know, says you know, a, a different kind of opinion. So I think for everybody that's been in the know, who has been researching this stuff that have, you know, heard stories from victims and people that have, you know, witnessed the fact that these things do go on. Yeah. Um, it was kind of like a huge thing. And so all these memes come out, all these GIFs and everybody's, you know, jumping all over it. But to me, I think there's also the crowd that will look at it like the naked man jumping out of Buckingham Palace. I mean, I think it'd be silly to not be on the fence about that one too. Right. I mean, I don't know, it's like all these hoaxes or, this must be a cover up. And so, oh, that could just be Ricky with a twisted sense of humor. And there's no way that these people are up to that because they're all sitting there laughing. Some are very uncomfortable. So mm. I just, it's a bit of a tug of war and it's not so much about what was behind that. It's what do we make of it? Because a lot of us already know what's going on. Those that don't might all of a sudden be like, okay, I got to look deeper into this. This is really weird. Yeah. Or others, yeah, I mean, might just 
look at it uh, and brush it off as 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 just some really crass humor. So I think it was a good thing though, um, yeah. for sure. And I do feel the white hats are out there. I've been talking to Dan Willis a lot who, um, you know, talked about how it was set up in the 1950s. The white hats actually in Eisenhower or uh, like signed an order for this positive intel to safeguard mm. us in the future. And it was a part of the plan way back when. And I know it wasn't just him, it was anybody that is looking out for the human race, including yeah. higher benevolent ET. So I, I feel like there's, there's, it, it, there's, there's no other way this could all go than to crumble. And this is what yeah. the uh, astral alignments are showing. Yeah, I want to get into that because I know that's part of one of your one of your specialties. And I just want to say for the record, <laughs> and I appreciate what you say, uh, some people haven't accepted these things that other people like ourselves know has happened. We know this, the pedophilia, we know the trafficking, we know all that stuff is real. There's enough information out there and it's really accelerated in terms of getting out there over the last 10 years or so. Um, so there's no question about it. And then, on, and then for those of us who are in the space that we hold, uh, yeah, I think you're right. What are we gonna do with this? Uh, are we going to, what kind of charge are we gonna take from it, I guess? You know, is this uh, an opportunity to merge polarities in our own field? Or do we take a more of a uh, activist type of approach and uh, point it out more? I don't know, I don't have the answer. Well, I, a lot of great breakthroughs happened for me during the eclipse time talking with some of the women that were abused by Epstein and we're collaborating on uh, some things that hopefully we'll be able to get into Hollywood, talk to some of the um, parents. You know, Tiffany uh, Fitzhenry just interviewed a mom of a boy that was in a boy band that experienced this abuse and so, you know, really just finding people that have these true stories. And first of all, uh, figuring out how we can assist, how we can support, how we can help them on a healing path. And also bringing more awareness because we're talking about real people and these stories need to reach the yeah. mainstream. They cannot be blown off. And so a lot of people saw them in the news. Virginia did a documentary. Those are names that are out there. There's no denying that Epstein is connected to these trafficking rings. And then there's others uh, that have those rings and how that actually connects to secret space programs and also the Hollywood industry and how all these power structures are linked to this multi-level trafficking um, issue that is on an earth level, but also a secret space program level. Yeah. Is it, you know, it, in, 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 uh, it, it frustrates me because I say, you know, rip the bandaid off. But, but a lot of people that I've posed this question to, they say, you know, it can't happen that way. It's gotta, it's gotta come out a little bit at a time because the majority doesn't have the psyche to handle it. Uh, and, and I can see that point. Uh, but I guess, you know, at the end of the day, this is the apocalypse, it is the unveiling and the truth uh, will prevail and the truth does need to come out. Uh, but God, it creates such, uh, <clears throat> You know, such, I don't want to say chaos, but I guess it is chaos, such <laughs> chaos within ourselves as we are all being faced with uh, being true to ourselves and, and, uh, and really aligning with our multi-dimensional aspects and our higher self. Yeah, it's, I mean, we know how intense it is to go through a physical detox when we know that there's toxins in the body or a person's going through some kind of withdrawal or, you know, cleansing the body of, um, bad substances and, you know, bad habits with food. So this is one that connects with the emotions, the mental body, mind control, social engineering, uh, what kind of identities we're carrying and how that's been passed down generation to generation um, for the ancestral patterns. And that's pretty heavy enough as it is. And then the social engineering from the time that we're small children going through the school systems and seeing what's coming through the television. And so it's creating a lot of anger because it's creating a detox on a level that, um, is a collective, you know, issue. Uh, and I know each country is different, but at least for this country, uh, pulling away from feeding into that or having it define who one is and all of a sudden having to go back into the dark night of the soul if they've never been in that zone is, uh, it can make some people really feel like they're going crazy and even suicidal because everything that they invested in, everything they believed in is now beginning to turn into you know, criminality. And then our morals are being tested. Like, are we going to do something? Are we going to act? No, it's easier to go into denial because we looked at, you know, the, I'm not saying we as in me or you, but 
you know, people looked up to those industries. They, they idolized it. I mean, yeah. even the queen still gets a lot of attention and the crowds are huge, you know, with these individuals. And I, and I just think, yeah, th there's so much investment in it that to begin to awaken shatters the foundation of people so heavily. And then there's misinformation. So instead of going to the people that could actually help them through it, they're getting a lot of weird information about the people that are really, really here in service to help with this transition and help with that trauma and that not just, you know, I mean, the victims of these abuses are the most important to work with, but helping people transition from that old paradigm into the new paradigm. A lot is going to happen organically just based on these alignments, but as long as that addiction, as long as that um, hook is still there, they might as well be metaphorically on heroin, refusing to get off and yeah. fighting with dear life to make it real, no matter what is being said. Yeah. And so with these true stories, there's going to be no leg for anybody to stand on to be able to continue to support this. And yeah. we have to also realize that a lot of these actors, Hollywood people are blackmailed and we, yeah. we need to just not... Um, brand them all the enemy. We have to understand what they've endured, what they were born into, and what tactics were used. And for some, they're trapped. And for others, it doesn't seem like they even care. They're not calling out and they seem to be mocking it and just kind of waving it in plain sight. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting because uh, I think in energetically, in our own personal lives, we've all compromised our soul at one point or another. And what you're saying is that these are also people and they may just be on a bigger stage or have more publicity or whatever the case is. But uh, I think you're right. I think a big part, and I think we talked about this last time when you came on, uh, it's not so much what's happened or what's happening or what's going to be revealed and disclosed, but how are we going to react to it? Now, I want to go back to what you said earlier, because I hadn't heard this and I find this very encouraging. Okay. And that is that you're saying back when, uh, uh, President Eisenhower made the famous speech, you know, about the military, military industrial complex on or about there, uh, that they, somebody or some group saw what was happening. And at that point, they put something into motion, even though it was 60, 70 years ago with the foresight, let's start, uh, let's start working against this oppressive energy, this controlling energy, and let's let's put a plan together to turn this thing around. So you're saying this happened way back in the 50s, and it's been ongoing ever since. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, basically, the plan. Uh, this is a quote. The plan env envisaged by Eisenhower was that when the U.S. military-industrial complex had been infiltrated and compromised by the Fourth Reich to the extent that it threatened the future of the Republic and Constitution, the U.S. the U.S. Marine Corps would be activated and take steps to rectify the situation. Mm. And basically uh, he set up the USMC special section um, as a secret executive order by President Eisenhower as a kind of institutional safeguard. And that was all about disclosure and this kind of like awakening happening over the course of time with, uh, and it connects with Q and it's hard to talk about because you start to go in that direction and people just come out of the woodwork yeah. trying to throw you under a bus for how dare you, you know, think that that's legit. And so I'm on the fence. I, I'd like to have hope. And it does yeah. make sense based on my research because he wanted to invade Area 51 when he lost control. I mean, all everything got out of control. The power of the president started to go way, way down because Project Paperclip and the infiltration of the Nazis basically set it up where there would be laws and restrictions to what information would be shared with even the president himself. Yeah. And so when Area 51, like after the supposed treaties and all this other activity, um, they were not briefing him or telling him what was going on. And so in response to being very, very disappointed with what MJ-12 was doing and how they were doing it, um, some people have come forward saying that he uh, put this in place and it's been slowly revealing, you know, ever since in, in, uh, in, in a way that can be, you know, done without huge ramifications. So there's, there's some sort of, you know, safeguard in place and that is connected to the White Hats and Dan Willis and Michael Sala have said that they believe that also connects with Q. And yeah. so it makes sense because of how much I know Eisenhower did care and how much his hands were tied that he might have come up with something like that. Because even yeah. Randy Kramer, you know, he talks about the positive super soldier program they created to offset the dangers of the super soldier programs put on, you know, by, you know, 
the Nazis, even though that's just a label. I mean, we know that there's layers yeah. behind that label. Yeah. So yeah, there, there's a lot more information. I'm going to be doing a, a round table with um, probably Randy, Dan, and Michael Solis soon to just really bring that out. Because um, there's been so much rewriting of history and disinformation. Yeah, and um, he had a strong link with Kennedy. And then we see the Kennedy connection with yeah. all the Q thing. But, you know, I'm not saying this because I'm like 100% uh, in belief. I don't like to have fixed beliefs when it comes to this kind of stuff, but yeah. it's certainly, I think, healthy to feel encouraged because, yeah. I mean, ha has there really been any damage coming from some of these drops? It's only given us awareness. I don't see people necessarily giving their power away. Maybe yeah. they get a little fanatical, but I think there's that feeling of relief that finally we're seeing something. We're seeing child trafficking and mainstream news now. Yeah. And, and but, but if we talk about it, it's like all of a sudden, oh, you must support Trump, you must be Republican. It's like, can we just see the bigger picture here? We're talking about deep state, we're talking about you know crimes against humanity, and we're talking about trying to liberate the human race. The politics don't matter. This is the biggest priority to look at and see where there is progress being made. And wherever that progress is being made, I mean, I think we should just you know, stay encouraged, but, but also take it upon ourselves to be empowered and be the leaders and not rely on the external. Yeah. Let it inspire yeah. us to stand up and do, you know, like what you're doing and, and what so many are doing. Yeah. Yeah. I think absolutely. You know, it, it, there's no doubt that this is a, you know, I'm the center of the universe. You're the center of the universe. I mean, uh, we're in a very unique situation and although it looks, it can look very scary and then, and, and there can be, uh, an element of fear. Uh, at the same time, this is the catalyst, just like our own personal lives, when we step through fear, when we open our mind. So I do, I, I totally agree with you. I, I, one thing that you can say about the whole Q dialogue and that whole thing is that it hasn't hurt anybody and that it's supplied information with more validation than just these alt news sites and this and that that people can poo poo away, you know? Yeah. Now, going back to the individual, uh, you know, it's, it's, I look at this thing and I say, you know, I see a really strong people making strong statements of nationalism, us versus them, separation, 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 could be Democrat, Republican, could be rich and poor, could be this and that, you know, and, and, uh, and I, and I, and I look at the gift of it on one hand, and on the other hand, uh, it, it frustrates me because I just love to see somebody step up and just say, here's, the, here's what the F is going on, okay? I'm gonna tell you what I know. Uh, I'm an eternal soul. I'm not afraid about what this world can do to me, kind of like what you do. <laughs> and and uh, I'm just gonna put it out there, you know? And, uh, and, and I think that's, that's I think it's, it's very important, like you said, to be wary and to trust yourself, but also to give credence to, uh, you know, something such as Q, you know, yeah. or Trump or whatever. Uh, and, and have a little faith, because I think that's what the battle is, faith versus fear. But bottom line, you know, uh, how, 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 much, uh, how much stock should we be taking in, uh, in terms of being an American, or being this, or being that? I mean, are we shooting ourselves in the foot? Uh, do we need to just start uh, coming out with a dialogue and a commentary? If there are no borders, uh, we are not, you know, above the universe? I mean, are there borders in the universe? I mean, I don't know these answers, but I mean, how can we move the ball upfield, uh, you know, if there's still these elements and frequencies and energies of, of separation? Yeah. Well, I think this is, we're, we're at the tail end of really experiencing duality and some people aren't willing to give up duality. There has to always be a battle and a war. And the thing is the battle shouldn't be between us and well-intentioned people. It doesn't matter who relates to who and what their interests are. The question is, do they have integrity? Do they care about the right things? Do they care about the earth? Do they care about their children? Do they care about their partners? Um, you know, is this a good, decent human being? Who cares what they do? Who cares if they go to church and you're not religious? Who cares who they might vote for? I mean, we, we got to drop all that because that's where we're, um, being pit against each other because we're always going to be able to research something or find something that can counteract something else. Right. And it's like the climate change thing, the climate movement, feminism, you know, all these different movements that people attach to um, is causing a lot of rift between people. And I, I think when, when we step out of the duality, we begin to notice the world shift around us. The thing is, though, we still have hooks. Um, there's still like a sticky connection with 
not wanting to leave anybody in the dust and feeling very committed to staying here and doing all that it takes. And also knowing that even if we wanted to go, we probably are not ready to quite move through the gateways because we have a commitment here. Anybody that's come in during this time that is in the know is awakened. They, I mean, I have articles and information about groups of souls that came in at specific times to do this work mm. that, um, you know, I know we and, and those that are doing this kind of work are, are, are those beings. So, um, and, and, I, and I think anybody who really stands for unity consciousness and doesn't get, want to get caught in that battle, um, you know, is, is a good message for us all. And I try and really stand by that and I do my best with it because the whole deal is, is we got to integrate polarity and, um, and to step out of sort of, you know, the argument is to recognize that the war is on consciousness. And so the only way we can master these forces that are trying to, you know, cause us to not you know get along with each other keeps us in the fragmentation that has been the issue which is why we've been so easily controlled yeah. and so we might think we're awake but we're still being controlled if uh we're basically gonna block or delete somebody because they don't think the same way yeah. if they're derogatory if they're rude if they're abusive yeah that makes sense but where are our belief systems getting in the way and and it's okay because sometimes we just don't want to be in debate and we just want a safe container for friendships so there's no judgment on that yeah. but i think um because we're dealing with wars that have to do with uh, humans being weaponized, nature being weaponized, the elements being weaponized, we have to understand that if that is still happening, there's something that we're missing and we have to really start to do the inner work and recognize that we are made of earth, air, fire, water. Now the ether is available, our DNA in this shift that we're in, in these alignments that we're going through has the opportunity to um, upgrade and advance. It might not all of a sudden switch on all these dormant strands, but the purification of the ether energy coming in and our ability to look at those elements and not just sit back and watch the TV, but activate those elements so that the fire energy is our passion, our mission. The earth energy is our ability to take care of our physical temple. Our air energy is being a free thinker. Um, and you know, so on our water energy is not depressed. It's clear crystalline water. And so we're seeing the world around us show us toxicity, show um, that they're able to control, you know, weather, which means that they're controlling us. So when we call that power back, then we're like super lit up and we're authentic. And those elements are empowered and we're the creative vessel that's, you know, working those energies and being the embodied, you know, template of the tree of life that is moving out of that duality. And so yeah. if each one of us were to do that, the earth would respond to us and it would clean things up right now these fires and everything that we're seeing on the planet is showing how far we have to go yeah. because there's no way that weather control mind control social engineering can happen the minute a person starts to be in their authenticity and begin to take responsibility because those are so low in frequency compared to the high frequency of spirit which trumps everything and so this shift is basically the 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 powers of spirit hold dominion over physical matter but as long as we believe that we're at the mercy of all this stuff and a victim to all of it. Um, we're just going to be waiting to see what the next thing is. And so just hopefully everybody will kind of get up and, and say, what do I want? You know, what do I want to create? And it doesn't have to be this huge mission to save the world. I mean, what do you, it, it's to be the frequency of what you love and what you're passionate about. And, 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 um, and really just, it, it increases our auric field and helps to shield us from a lot of attack. And, uh, you know, we, the personality matrix has taught us to really need approval, be validated, get good grades, be pat on the back. And that old authority is going away and it was never really good for us. Yeah. So we have to just, you know, decide on our own terms what our worth is and, and know that, you know, it doesn't have to be an ego identification. It can be something, you know, from our heart and soul about how we view, you know, life and the sacredness of everything around us. And which is good because the kind of talks you're doing where you're heading is, is bringing in all those important things like sacred union and stuff. You know, I mean, we gotta, we gotta, we, we gotta claim what's sacred. I mean, sexual energy has been the most targeted. I mean, there's more sexual dysfunction on this planet. It's just mind blowing. Yeah. And for somebody who is in the elementary school of sacred sexuality, I can just tell you that all that stuff we've done <laughs> has no, uh, has no, uh, carries no weight against uh, what we really are. But you talked about um, attack, you know, being attacked. I, I see a lot of people, obviously, in what I do, you know, uh, every day uh, that put it out there like you do. Few that have been doing it as long as you have. I know you've been attacked. I see it happen all the time. You mentioned earlier, we're moving out of duality. We're in the last stages of duality. You also mentioned about balancing polarities. 
how does someone like Laura Eisenhower balance polarities when she's getting attacked every day? And I'm talking just even in the last few days because I've been watching what's been going on. Well, first of all, I, 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 it's, it's been this way for the last 10 years. I only give attention to it when it's so ridiculous and I need a good laugh. I mean, it really doesn't hurt me. I mean, maybe at first I'm just like, what, are you freaking kidding me? You know, the thing I worry about, I guess, is that it's a virus that will spread and people will be like, yeah, you know, my friends will start to question me, you know, it's in, and who cares about who's what, you know, gender anyway, but you know, I'm definitely 100% the female body I was born into. Um, you know, just, it just creates a distraction and I think it's draining and that's the worst part of it. I don't really care as far as, you know, you can throw stones at me all day and I'll just catch them and, and juggle them. I, I don't really care. Um, but, but I just see the impact it just has on everything. It drops the energy. Yeah. Um, so I, I just laugh. That's why I, I made that silly post about, you know, oh, I'm, I'm working on Project Bluebeam. No, I loved, I loved, I loved, I loved them all. Montana. Like I'm not a tech savvy person anyway. Um, so I just had to make fun of it. And so that's kind of how I keep myself from dropping into, I wouldn't but I mean, do you, but do you have like a, a way or a method where regardless of what the extremes of the spectrum are, uh, that you utilize to balance the polarities within yourself? Well, I just usually just block and delete and ignore, or I laugh, or if that person just seems maybe a little bit misguided, I don't want to just get all defensive and, and react. I mean, I might just have a conversation and say, okay, you know, where are you getting that information? Cause I don't know how big it is. I mean, when I first started 10 years ago, there were websites out basically targeting me and videos yeah. and it was pretty extreme. I didn't make it too public. Um, but I, I would say within myself, I just breathe. I mean, I know myself, yeah. I've been tested enough. I, I, I can't even believe that uh, I, I made it to where I am today. I made it to my husband. I'm, I'm in a safe place. I got away from, you know, the Mars recruiters. And, and I just know that it comes with the territory. So it's like anything. I think we need to take assault, any kind of assault and use it as a tool for our growth and, and allow it to push us to be stronger, more determined because it wants to do the opposite. So if we take on something or feel something that wants to create an effect, I like to put my attention on creating the opposite effect. Yeah. And that's what we have to do. Cause a lot of people you know, they're like, oh, I want to be a speaker, but I'm too insecure. It's like, okay, well, take that insecurity. Let it be a catalyst. You know, don't let it control you. You know, if somebody's going to insult you, instead of letting it, you know, drop your energy, you know, I'm going to maybe just write a few paragraphs about something that's really important to me because it's reinforcing my truth. Awesome. Nobody can take away my truth. It only makes it grow. So I don't mind these challenges, but I mean, I'm sure people are like, oh, you know, don't feed the trolls. I'm like, believe me. No, it's a, it's a good. I don't it's feed the trolls, but sometimes I have to laugh at them. No, it's a good, I think it's a good uh, method, you know, is uh, because if you think about it, uh, that type of energy can stay with you, you know, and we all go through it, you know, and uh, we can carry it with us. But I like what you say, even if you're, even if you're going to express something on the other side of the spectrum that has nothing to do with what came at you, you're putting out positive charge to balance and counter that negative charge. Now you- I do my best with it. You know, sometimes- Depends what day it is, um, but I, I'm I'm definitely used to it. I mean, if I were to call it out every time it happened, then I would be saying something every day. But every once in a while, you know, just so it doesn't get in there, you know, I just like to just you know say something, especially for those that are falling for it, because it's very easy for somebody to say, "Oh, you're gonna watch her videos. Oh, I heard this and that about her. Oh, she's totally mm -hmm. controlled. Oh, she worked for Project Bluebeam. Mm -hmm. That person's not gonna give me a chance. I'm not saying I have like all this important information, but What's important is I'm really here to help us understand and myself, what is our junk DNA made of? What is our true human potential? What is this shift all about? And I wanna turn it back on, you know, I, I want it to be a gift to, you know, people's ability to say, wait a second, I am made of something incredible. I am a, a powerful creator being. Um, I can clear these wounds and traumas somehow or leverage them in a way that can make a change for the better on the planet. You know, I'm willing to be transparent about the targeting yeah. and the you know, horrible, like in, insane uh, challenges that I've gone through myself. So when, I mean, that, that's, I guess what I'm concerned about is because I see it happen to others where, you know, gossip, I mean, we, we see that in school systems, how, how damaging that can be to somebody's reputation. And so it's not really about me. I just want people to be able to access this information because I've dedicated my life's work to being able to help people to move beyond this mind control and this limitation and enslavement that they're trying to make worse. And um, it's really not about me like, oh, 
uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working on me as I research the information to help me to recover from some of this stuff. And I just think we all need to work together. That's a good point. And, That's a yeah. very good point. And I'm working on me the entire time I'm doing what I do. Uh, you know, whoever yeah. that person is that's saying that. Uh, you know, you, you, I don't know a lot about planetary alignments and, and, and that kind of stuff, the astrology. Um, and I know you do, but I have noticed over the last two or three years in an accelerating fashion that there's a lot of truth to it. <laughs> and I've recently been, I guess the last couple of months, been reading about, and not too in depth, I'm still not too, too well versed on it, uh, this conjunction with uh, that's that's kind of unique that hasn't happened in quite a while. I, I don't know if it's Saturn and Pluto or, or who what it is, but you mentioned earlier that the stars are aligning, so to speak. Uh, it's kind of foretelling what's happening. Can you kind of just run us through that and give us an idea of what you're seeing out there? Yeah, and you know, a person doesn't really have to understand astrology if 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 one is in their authenticity. And just in the in the moment, and just really uh, on task with what they're here to do. You know, you're just going to feel it. You don't have to fully understand it. Um, but it's interesting, you know, to know just for uh, you know putting the extra attention on why uh, this is encouraging for the whole of humanity. Um, basically, every 35 to 37 years or so, Pluto and Saturn form a conjunction, and you know that's like twice in maybe a person's lifetime, maybe just once, but it's not just that. I mean, this is affecting the eclipse window between December 26th and January 10th. December 26th was a solar eclipse in the sign of Capricorn. And that's the South node. It has a lot to do with the past. It has to do with past lives. It has to do with the collective and what we've been through in these many, many uh, dark cycles of history it has to do with our earlier years. And Capricorn Saturn has a lot to do with, you know, it's basically control. Um, in its shadow, kind of dark side, uh, uh, the control matrix. Uh, it rules outer authority and a lot of outer authority has been very abusive. So it's the way maybe we are raised by our parents, school systems, but then we see authority also being maybe a priest that might've abused us or a boy scout leader or a teacher or somewhere that that Saturn energy or that authority or that power was misused. And of course we have a really, really dark history when we see how leadership and authority has been very corrupt and how a lot of these leaders or shadow layers behind these leaders hold a lot of dark agendas. So Pluto next to Saturn is basically allowing us to look at where we're still holding on to some of that, you know, old voices of authority that might be uh, impacting our choices, old abuses that we're still hanging on to, insecurities, energy blocks, um, things that we limit ourselves to, risks that we don't want to take. Um, and so we're working with the law of structure and the law of structure is now becoming a vessel and a container for these higher dimensional energies to come in because we have a lot more planets on board. Um, What's happening on Sunday is we have a conjunction with Pluto, Saturn, Sun, Mercury. Uh, there's two asteroids connected to the Divine Mother. One I can barely pronounce, though. It's the uh, husband of, or, or the the partner to Chiron, the wounded healer. Mm. And it's called Char Chariklo. And mm. then there's Cirrus, which is the Divine Mother archetype. And so this, this um, energy of Chariklo has to do with being able to take care of that wounded healer, that, that husband that she was with, that, you know, was wounded through um, patience and devotion. So we have a lot within us right now that's helping us to let those things come up to the surface and not necessarily take the coping mechanism that's not healthy and, and move in the direction of something healing because we have Jupiter forming a harmonious aspect with Uranus. And that's about as high vibe as you can get. Mm. And all of this is in earth signs, which means that it's not just, an awakening in our consciousness it's actually something that's coming into the physical plane and changing the very nature of the timeline that we're on and wow. so i feel like you know the fire's happening during this eclipse window and a lot of the things that are throwing us into survival particularly i just feels so much uh i mean my heart's so with everybody in australia for what they must be going through but um this is where we have to take that as a catalyst like you were saying and really come together more and recognize that look at what's at stake if we don't step into our power. And so these alignments are incredibly powerful. Uranus and Eris, which is an asteroid, the Eris one, is a standing station on the 11th. 
and then we'll be going direct. Eris is all about discord and strife, so there's a lot of tension, but Uranus connected to Jupiter is the divine mind. It connects us with truth. It connects us with synchronicities. It connects us with epiphanies and those genius flashes and moments where we can say, hey, I just thought of a really great idea. And that's actually becoming a part of where this transformational alchemical energies of Pluto and Saturn are helping us to create the new world. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it's a personal thing. So yes. it's really about out with the old, in with the new. And because there's so much concentrated energy in the South Node area of it, um, it's more about changing the way we look at the past. And then the North Node, which is the lunar eclipse we experienced today in the sign of cancer with all these you know, strong mother energies and influences mean that if the North Node is the direction that it's good for us to move into as a soul, as a humanity, we're, we're being called to embrace the mother, the nurturing energies of the mother. Now, we know that there's a Saturn moon matrix and a lot of artificial energies and interferences connected to Saturn and moon, which has created the patriarchal program. But because Neptune is making a harmonious aspect to the whole mix, it's a higher octave of the lunar energy. So it's helping us to transcend um, this Saturn moon uh, mind control yeah. and this patriarchal imbalance of the masculine and feminine and Jupiter, Uranus and Neptune, which are outer planets or Uranus and Neptune are, and then Pluto's an outer planet. These are the most initiatory planets that exist in the zodiac, it's actually helping us to illuminate the divine blueprint and sacred union and step into a healthy relationship between the masculine and feminine, which helps us integrate polarity and be highly, highly creative and potent in um, being able to manifest our dreams and visions. Bingo. Yeah. And would you say that this type of uh, information is, is um, forecasting or relaying to us that this is available to us does it necessarily mean that it's going to happen anyway or does it just mean that here's what you have to work with and the opportunity and the potential is there the opportunity and the potential is there it's a timeline that cannot be destroyed our junk dna always holds something in dormancy that's not really junk but as long as we see it as junk, as long as we ignore it and our attention's on what's going on on the television and the propaganda and, and things that are external that are telling us how to think, how to behave, what the future looks like, you know, we still run the risk of grounding and anchoring with these energies in an artificial timeline. I don't really see that that's necessarily possible though, even though we still are vulnerable to it. First of all, there's a lot of mass meditations. Second of all, there's so many people that have stood up and just taking it upon themselves to do good in the world, to inspire people, to stand in their truth and to spread information. And so even if people are sort of not taking advantage of this time, there's still a chance that they can say, wait, wait a second, I see that this pathway isn't taking me anywhere good. And they might feel like a survival in their soul, not their physical realm, but like, you know, there's too much at stake. Because basically when we look at gray aliens or EBEs, these are digressed humans. They used to be humans with souls. Um, and so, and we see that we're kind of at this crossroads where the future and the past and everything is intersecting. And we've had enough experiences to be able to probably catch ourselves before we do something detrimental because we, we're coming in from all over the place, past, future, you know, um, all these different scenarios. So I almost feel like the whole of humanity is going to go down this harmonious, positive timeline. It's going to take a lot because we need rehabilitation. We need healing centers. We need to support victims. There's still a lot of work to do, but I think um, that, it's, it's gonna impact everybody. Um, worst case scenario, you know, I don't know, a person gets kind of entrenched or maybe they make agreements with the dark ones and they realize that they're not gonna stick with whatever they said about, we promise you fame and technology in the bigger picture, almost only temporary. Then they're just gonna ditch them. I mean, who knows? The thing is, it's like, there there's so many beings that have been condemned based on the fact that they lost true connection with source. Their DNA has not, uh, is not going to be able to access it in the way that we're going to be able to. And they want to bring as many down as possible because this is their anger of wanting to, you know, keep us all down because without us, they have no food source. So they have to do everything under the sun to keep us in this low density so that they can feed on us because they've compromised their DNA. It doesn't mean that that's indefinite, but they're going to have to really unwind from all this darkness and evil to be able to get back to the potential that we all hold. So the question is, can we cut, the, can we break the chains? Can victims, not be silent can they can they begin to um reach out for real support here you know this is a huge rehabilitation and a huge transformation based on healing and all the facades dropping away so we can see exactly what's going on without uh turning a blind eye or 
Yeah. So, um, so I'd say it's happening no matter what. Yeah. It's going to get really uncomfortable for people with symptoms if they avoid it because <clears> the body is wanting to do what the soul wants and what the higher mind wants. It's, right. it's, got a better relationship with that than it does the mind control. The mind control makes us sick. It makes us stressed. Um, and it, it pollutes our nucleic acids in our DNA. And it keeps us in a world of toxicity because we're toxic. So as we create this shift and this Pluto energy is giving us a cleansing, Uranus is giving us an activation. We, um, you know, can really move forward. So the more we surrender and the more we trust, the less symptoms we're going to have. And so that's the tough part right now is very often when people get symptoms, they want to take a pharmaceutical off because they yeah. think they're going crazy or they feel like they're suicidal. They don't see that there's something better in the bigger picture than where they are right now. And that's the danger right now is how are people gonna handle the symptoms? Are they gonna go to the doctor, drug it, or have some diagnosis give to them that they're gonna own as being what they have, an affliction that they don't need to necessarily own? Maybe in some cases, yes. Or are we gonna really come together, utilize the healing tools and modalities we have and the comfort we can give one another the compassion and support and really walk together yeah. in this. And so the more we can open our arms up to people, I think the less polarized it will be. And the chances of bifurcation are going to be a lot more slim where this artificial timeline takes people into phantom earth where they digress into these, you know, lower beings and then they're more enslaved than before. I just, I'm holding hope that that doesn't even need to happen. You, you mentioned earlier, uh, you talked a little bit about authenticity, like in, in other words, you were talking, you said, you know, one one way to go at it is just to be you and and so on transparency i i know this you know part of this this conundrum is you know how can all this stuff be going on out here how can i todd you know this one soul have any effect on all of that and we keep going back to what the sacred texts have shown and so many things have shown to thine own self be true we are made in the image co-creators and so on uh but in terms of transparency uh, and just trying to take this down to the boot, boots on the ground level, we are all sitting here going, hey, you know, government, hey, institution, hey, whoever, you need to be transparent. That would cut all the BS and we could all just go on down the road. But how important is it, how significant would it be, would it be worthy or worthwhile, I guess, for us to be more transparent with each other? And just to just to bring our own veils down and just to tell it like it is good, bad, indifferent. I think that's that's where it has to begin, because it's really up to us. I mean, we, we we've got these governments, we've got this stuff going on, we've got all this external. But, you know, wh wh where it shows up as how um, well we're doing as a humanity is how we you know relate to one another. And the transparency is really important because holding facades or trying to pretend, you know, you're somebody you're not, I mean, that is not a healthy way to be. And so it creates a lot of personality disorders. We're in a personality matrix that functions on mind control, social engineering, because it knows it can influence our ego based on uh, the reward system, based on self-worth. Um, we don't want to be failures. We want to be winners. We want to succeed. And some don't care if they're losers because they just see through it all and they just kind of fall through the cracks. But then what about being healthy? What about being able to find that middle ground where you don't have to um, answer to that reward system and you don't have to fall through the cracks either. You can just be true to you. And so I really think it starts with relationships, our relationship with ourselves, and just being really honest and clear because we see like narcissistic personality traits. We see um, anxiety disorders, panic attacks, all these things that they tell us, oh, you need to take a drug for that. Yeah. Instead of like being like, well, can I just be me and just figure it out? So the narcissists tend to not take drugs because they already think that they're perfect and awesome and they have this manipulation thing down. But those that are really struggling, you know, it's really important to have a voice because or else we act out and then it just it's buried and it's in our unconscious and it just ends up making everybody's life around them, um, you know, a little bit complicated. So. You know, just just being able to say, I'm 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 I just got triggered. You know, I don't know where it's coming from. I know it's not you. I'm just it, it's hard for me to separate what happened to me in the past from what you're saying right now. And I'm kind of going into a fear zone and I just need you to hold space for me. That's a lot better than blame, abuse, screaming, walking out of the house and projecting. So um, and this is, you know one aspect of it, but then that can be the way we perform in our job. It could be the type of, you know, work we choose to do. Is it in alignment with, with our truth? You know, does it support our visions for the world? Does it contribute something meaningful? 
So we have to just kind of look at every area of our life because if we don't change our physical lifestyle and if we don't begin to walk the talk and have our spiritual, our spiritual um, awareness be a way of life, I mean, that's, that's where it has to happen and it can be so simple. So, you know, it's, it seems like a lot of things spiritual get so overly glamorized or almost like overly complicated when it's just simply a way of life to live in integrity, to be healthy, to care about, you know, and, and sure we can complicate it too, but uh, I think it has to be without it becoming grounded and a way of life, then it has no impact on the earth energies and the earth stays toxic and a low vibration. Just and we're living in rhetoric. life, you know? Yeah. It's just a bunch of rhetoric, you know? Yeah, everywhere. we just, we just, you know, we can talk till we're blue in the face. We can go to conferences and talk till we're blue in the face. But, you know, like, like you and Morgan, me and my husband too, we, we know that sacred union is hugely important. And that's, that's the key. And that's the foundation. And that has to be something, whether you're in a relationship or not, that you honor within yourself is that you're on that sacred path and journey. And, um, and that foundation is set. And I think then we are emitting a frequency that helps to wake people up because our throat chakra will either reveal if we're mind controlled and we're spreading the virus of mind control through believing in stuff that really is, you know, superficial or false or, or, distorted or interfered with, or we're speaking words of love and healing and a vibration of truth that can actually inspire people because deep down that part of them is screaming to come out. Yeah. And, and the thing is they don't have to believe in anything other than what their own truth is. But when we make you know people feel comfortable and we're coming from a place of authenticity, we give other people permission to as well. And then we can laugh with them. It doesn't matter how different they are. It doesn't matter who they are. We, 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 we find that comfort zone. And it doesn't have to be complicated with trying to red pill them either, even though it's definitely good to slip a few anytime you feel like you can. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, we had a show on earlier today with a beautiful uh, sister, Natasha Weeks. Her and her husband and three-year-old are in a truck camper and following the guidance and just doing it, right? But she started talking about her child, this, this uh, boy by the name of Ocean, three years old. She, called, she referred to him as an Aurora child. Uh, now, whether it's Aurora or Crystal or Diamond or whatever, what impact are these these kids having on the situation? Uh, do you have any intel or any information on what's coming into the uh, to the realm through these these young people? There's been a lot of waves of you know indigo crystal. Um, there's another one, and I have an article about it called Light Lifes, uh, and that uh, connects with people who really came you know to to raise the frequency of, of, of the planet. Um, star seeds tend to be targeted though, and advanced children tend to be targeted. So school systems aren't very safe uh, for advanced souls like that. And I mean, I, I feel like it's not just like chosen ones or special ones. I feel like everybody has the ability to mm -hmm. be in that vibration. It's just some come in as the activators yeah. and some have really you know, fallen asleep and have gotten really, really entrenched in the program, but they still have that diamond sun DNA. They still have the ability to be on that level, but you have to have activators. It's like, it's like if you're trying to tune a guitar, you, you're going to need something to help you figure out how to tune it up, like tuning forks too. Um, so I, I, I see them as sort of frequency uh, holders to help others, you know, to activate. But if they're targeted, if they're being drugged, if they're being misunderstood, then, you know, there's all sorts of problems. And even, you know, secret space programs and some of these darker agendas have targeted, you know, very advanced souls as well, mm. um, to use their abilities for their own, you know, purposes. So, um, Aurora is a very powerful one because the Aurora energy connects with Andromeda, the Auroras and the Aquafarians were not able to incarnate into this planet for a really long time. Cause it was so heavy and so dense. Mm. Actually, some of them actually went extinct around the time of the electrical wars from what I've, you know, researched mm. and it makes sense to me. And that's why I share it. Uh, and so now this is a much easier time for those souls to come in, but a lot of souls are coming in and dealing with things like vaccination damage who are highly advanced that are here to help us learn how to heal from these things. So even if, you know, somebody's struggling with, you know, a child with health issues, or perhaps they, you know, were vaccinated, or maybe they have behavioral, you know, problems, and they don't seem to be, you know, th these advanced souls, they still are, you know, we have to recognize that the adversities, though, are something that um, warrior energies come in to contend with. We have to incarnate into the problem in order to solve the problem. And there's a lot of willing souls that are like, okay, I'll be that kid. And yeah. I'll, you know, so, so there's those as well. But um, yeah, they, uh, 
they they hold this orifim consciousness and only a few small numbers if even small groups can impact the whole collective that are holding you know these kind of energies um and you know there's the emerald or you know that i mean there's there's endless you know types there's indigo one indigo two crystal you know emerald um and i think us as adults i mean there's there's a lot of us adults that are holding those kind of energies um and so these children need our support and guidance and protect them from the system that is absolutely trying to uh, take that away from them. And that's why it's really good to really, you know, educate people as much as it's hard for people to accept the fact that, wow, our governments would actually want to poison us. And, and when I say governments, I'm not talking about the ones yeah. that are in the front. We're talking about ones that are have the hidden hand behind the scenes. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's that's an attack on our DNA. They keep wanting to attack the DNA because the DNA, the junk DNA holds these higher harmonic universes and, is, and it's the key to our ascension. And so this particular alignment that we're going through this weekend is helping to clear those seals and those frequency fences so that we can begin to gradually um, upgrade, but it's not gonna happen overnight. So we have to hold a lot of patience and expect that from this point forward, a lot of amazing synchronicities are gonna happen to assist us at this time. But if we're in fear and anxiety, we're only gonna see things that reinforce it. And there's plenty on the internet and plenty on the television a plenty of stuff and propaganda there that can absolutely uh, waste our time and 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 lead us astray. So, but I think I think people are really being pushed to the edge. I, it, you know, if anybody you know has any heart in them, they'd look at what's going on in Australia and just say, yeah. "Enough already! I got to really jump on board and figure out you know what is happening to our world." Yeah. And you know, and I know that I've maybe said something about Greta here and there, and I'm not against her at all. But we have to look at the whole picture here. We're dealing no, with no engineering and chemtrails, you know? What's no, that? I get what you're saying on that subject totally. Absolutely. You know, and, and I see I see that same type of uh, duplicitous, uh, and I'm not taking a shot at her either, but two energies behind one, uh, what seems to be one energy, you know? Uh, you know, I mean, it's it, it's out there. You, you, uh, you, you mentioned, I know you do a lot of research would there be uh, one or two or three uh, websites or books uh, and or your own uh, uh, that you would recommend to someone that might get up to speed a little bit on some of the history and some of the stuff going on behind the scenes, the stuff that's behind the curtain? Well, I don't read much books. I, I just tend to bounce around and uh, research. I wrote a lot before I found people that were talking about this kind of stuff. And when I found a resonance to what I was already kind of downloading as a child, um, the, the, the places I gravitated towards was uh, energeticsynthesis.com, Lisa Renee. Yeah. Her Ascension Glossary is incredibly helpful um, if you just have like a question. And the rest of it, I mean, that, that to me has been in most resonance with, you know, what I understand. It's, it's kind of crazy. I'm like a terrible reader. I just, mm. I don't know. I just, I try and read books, but just doesn't go very well. I'm trying to think, um, I have a lot of people featured on my website mm. and um, actually I'm gonna obviously put your channel there too, just so people know who I feel are the good go-tos, you mm. know, to listen to their channels, listen to their information, you know, whistleblowers and this and that. And, and for people to discern, I'm not saying like everybody on there, like I follow all the time. I don't really yeah, yeah. No. do that, but um, yeah, I, 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 I would say that that at this point is, my favorite. I'm not quite sure. Um, a lot of the other stuff. I mean, I was looking at like Peter Farley. Uh, he wrote something about the tree of life. What happened to the tree of life? Mm -hmm. That's very interesting stuff. Um, I tend to, you know, take bits and pieces. Um, and then, you know, if I, if I get a little piece, sometimes it connects a dot to something else and yeah. then it all kind of yeah. pours through, yeah. but um, yeah, I'm, so I'm building a featured page and if anybody wants to check that out, there's just really good resources and channels and some of these people are authors and have told their story and exposed a lot of things. It really depends, you know, what a person's looking for. I would look into medical astrology because it'll help you, especially with ascension symptoms, understand, um, you know, you know, what planets, what signs connect with what organs. And then if you understand your chart, that to me is my favorite book because I don't do like normal astrology. I mean, I don't know what normal astrology is, but you can be your own book, you know, like what makes you operate? What makes you tick? You know, what ancestral patterns are you carrying? What blocks are there? What, where is the best direction you can move into in order to experience downloads and upgrades? You know, for some, it might be playing an instrument for others. It might be going off, you know, on a trek, 
Um, and it doesn't mean, you know, there's really a wrong or right choice, but, uh, you know, the 12 houses, which now are 13, give us an idea of like, uh, you know, self, it gives us self-knowledge and we've lost that to mind control and social engineering. So um, astrology has been really my book. I was raised on the I Ching. Like, I feel like the I Ching raised me like that's like not to bust my parents for not doing a good job or not being there, but um, you know what I mean? But I got a lot out of that book, even though the translations are a little bit extreme. Um, it's, it's really powerful in how we connect with the elements and masculine and feminine energies. So I don't know if, um, and, and, you know, you're kind of learning as you go along because I think we're the greatest books. And I think the more we can dive into our soul and really get to know ourselves, the more, you know, this outer information, even if the terminologies are a little bit over one's head, begin to really make sense. And so that was the beginnings for me, yeah, is to work with those things. The, uh, your website is, uh, is it Cosmogaia, uh, CosmicGaia.org? Yes. Okay. So I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to put this up on the screen for everybody just for a second and uh, just show you what, uh, what she's got here. So this is Cosmic Gaia. This is a uh, Laura Eisenhower's website. Now this is the page she was talking about feature. So Thank there's you. quite a few, yeah, there's quite a few, a diverse group of, uh, there's Lisa Renee, um, you know, there's quite a few here, Jimmy Church Radio, Marie Batchelor. She's been on here three or four times. She's, she's awesome. Uh, so this is a, this is it. Cosmo Gaia, Cosmo Gaia .org. Yep. And you can uh, subscribe to a podcast. I do interviews uh, and I do mini sessions and I help people understand their chart. And I also send out newsletters. I just sent out a really big one uh, this morning about this particular shifter. And I haven't updated the events I'm doing in this year ahead, but you'll see a, a webinar coming up in February and some stuff about my mission, some videos that I feature. I just learned how to do a website. Um, so it's not like, well, it's been eight years and we're still trying to learn to do ours. <laughs> so don't feel bad. Uh, um, how can we support you? Well, I feel very supported and that's wonderful. Um, I, I just feel this really mutual connection with, with a lot of people. Uh, mm -hmm. and it's amazing social media, you know, how many people I feel like super connected to and, you know, friends with, um, I mean, I think subscribing is, is helpful. It's only $15 a month and I'm, I'm planning on launching some things and really helping to support victims of child trafficking and abuse and, uh, you know, people that have gone through secret space programs and extreme trauma. And I'm wanting to, you know, create healing centers and, you know, a lot of stuff I'm going to have to fund myself, like, you know, taking trips to have meetings with them and to really, you know, start to build something big so that we can get into these zones and really help victims um, have a voice and, so, you know, if, if you want to support my work, just $15 a month, you know, also comes with stuff too. So, uh, and that has really been, you know, helpful for me so far. And, you know, and I, and I let people just, it's like, you can email me, you can text me if you're like having a crisis and I can just pull up your chart and just answer a few questions here and there. I mean, I have to have certain boundaries so it doesn't get out of control, but um, yeah, subscribing is incredibly supportive to me, but just, you know, subscribe or not i just feel just us just staying connected is yeah. hugely important and i feel so grateful for you because you 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 just have been you know i've only really met you a few times but you know you and morgan just feel like you know family and you've been so you know wonderful to me and so i really appreciate that and there's just i think just that's you know growing between people um i i it's just so surreal to me because i used to like really just totally be like alone just really just no real friends just raising my kids by myself and it's just like boom it's just like oh my gosh um so I, I I'm feeling really you know uh my heart's just kind of swelling with a lot mm. of gratitude and yeah. and for people to you know to, to still be connected to me no matter what they hear about me you know that they know me enough they see me clearly enough to not just join in with the with the yeah. you know crazy you'd have to, you'd have to be crazy <laughs> to be doing what you're doing if you weren't absolutely standing in your truth who would want who would want to uh, bring that type of attention and and counter energy to you you know so yeah we we uh we definitely can do that i mean we got a we got a nice community here uh we're about eighty thousand strong and uh that's just the ones that are documented so are you guys uh, on the live and replay let's support her uh join Sology, join uh join morgan and todd uh, to support her, we're gonna 
we're gonna uh, we're gonna do that. So uh, fifteen dollars a month isn't a lot. Uh, she's been doing the work for a long, long time, and uh, and I'm I'm happy to see, you know, anyone. Uh, you know, it's funny because we meet people like just like ourselves, and we're at a certain uh, in a certain space, and then as you get to know them more, you can see that expansion and growth that energy that you're talking about, that to thine own self be true, that sovereignty. And, and that's uh, that's as uh, much of a reality as this tornado that's about to come through here. <laughs> so, but um, listen, Laura, thank you so much. Uh, tell uh, tell your husband I said hello, and I'm looking forward to some laughs. And uh, and I'm we're setting our intentions to uh, you know, drop by for a visit when it's a lot warmer. <laughs> Please do. Oh gosh, that'll be so much fun. I can't wait. Yeah, I, I envy the, I, I, I lived on the road and we're gonna go back to, you know, doing that. It's really important. It, it, it's weird to get used to. It's like a house without wheels. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, you're, oh, please come come see us. And, and I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll run into each other at events. And yeah, I think so. I think so. Absolutely. You take care and best to you and your family. And thank you so much uh, for all that you do and for coming on and sharing space with us and honor us with your presence. I look forward to collaborating with you again and again and again. And oh, thank you so much. Yeah. And me if we well. can any help at all, you let us know. Okay, right. for sure. And thank you so much for having me on and much love to both of you. And um, yeah, I'm really, yeah, grateful. So thanks everybody for joining us too. All right, you take care. Okay, you as well. Bye-bye.